been a while since I last talked about the new 151, but we just posted our design for Dugong last week, so I thought this was a good time to cover some more. If you haven't heard of the new 151, here's a quick rundown. My friend Infinipede and I have been going through the first generation of Pokémon and redesigning them to update or otherwise just spice up their designs. We get help from a few other friends, and we post all of our work on Tumblr. If you want to check out the newest designs that we've done, you can go to new151.tumblr.com. Link is in the description. We haven't been posting as regularly as we would like, but more on that at the end of the video. I've been talking about our thought process for these redesigns in videos, and if you haven't seen the other ones, there's a whole playlist that you can check out. But up next in Pokédex order is a design that I really like. Diglett. Well, I like the new Diglett, not the original. Original Diglett is incredibly simple. It's largely based on whack-a-mole, but we scrapped that idea. Instead, we went for the star-nosed mole, since it has a very recognizable nose. The only thing that original Diglett really has going for it is that we don't know what its body looks like. But we do know that it has claws, since it can learn moves like Slash. So we gave our Diglett visible claws. For Dugtrio, though, we really wanted to step up their teamwork. OG Dugtrio is just three Diglett. Nothing special. But what if those three Diglett could work together to make something bigger? We took inspiration from Palisand and Wishiwashi and came up with this. Dugtrio as a team of three Diglets that basically earthbend a giant Diglet made out of swirling soil. I picture you sending out your Dugtrio in battle and it just comes out as the Diglet triplets and then they raise up this giant swirling monster. Meowth is based on a Maneki Neko, but it's a really simplified take on it. So our version just ups that by giving it more of the traditional Maneki Neko characteristics. It's got the calico pattern, a bobtail, a bib represented by the dark patch on its chest, and a chime hanging from its neck. Note that we also emphasize how Meowth is sitting in this pose. Our Meowth would be a quadruped. As for Persian, it's kind of the same. It's a more grown-up calico, but we gave it the long bushy tail of the Persian cat breed, just as a nod to its English name. And then we adorned it with more gold, more jewels, just to really emphasize this cat's high class. It was kind of inspired by Egyptian jewelry, since the ancient Egyptians really revered cats. Our original idea for redesigning Psyduck was to really emphasize its rubber ducky look, since that's obviously part of the inspiration for its design. But the more I looked at it, the more I realized that Psyduck isn't a duck at all. Psyduck is a platypus in just about everything except for the tail. So that was the main thing that we changed. We also changed its coloration a little bit to make it more interesting and really emphasized the headache aspect of the Pokémon. And platypuses are referred to as duck build, so it still works with the name. Golduck continues that trend. Ours is still a platypus, but we wanted to reference some cool waterfowl. There are a lot of those. We settled on the coloration and the radical hairstyle of the tufted duck, with the yellow eyes matched by a golden jewel rather than a red one. Gold is associated with psychic powers, which is why Sabrina's Marsh Badge is golden, and also why Golduck has that name. So the golden jewel just makes it more obviously appropriate. Mankey and Primeape are pretty clearly based on baboons. You can see it in the pig nose and in their very aggressive natures. So we thought the main thing that Mankey needed was a body. We also gave it prominent eyebrows and a nice pink tushy, but for Mankey we thought that that was enough. And Primeape didn't really need that much more, but to add something more unique to this design, we decided to give it the colors of the mandrill. Mandrills are related to baboons, but they're also really big, really aggressive, and they have this very striking red and blue face, as well as a bright red rear end, which we also gave to Primeape. The last two Pokémon I want to talk about today are Growlithe and Arcanine. They are based on the Shisa and other kinds of lion-dog statues that are seen guarding temples all over China and Japan. That's still what our versions are based on, but since Growlithe is known for its loyalty, that design leans more on the dog angle, specifically on a Shiba Inu. Whereas Arcanine goes more for a lion look, with some tiger thrown in since OG Arcanine already had those tiger stripes. As you can see, the main thing that we changed about these designs is their very curly fur, and that has a few layers to it. First, it references the curly fur that many depictions of Shisa have. Second, it is also meant to look like billowing smoke. Since these are fire-type Pokémon, but the originals don't have much fire-ishness going on besides their color. 
And third, the curls are meant to be reminiscent of wind symbols, since Arcanine is said to run as fast as the wind, and its name in Japanese is even windy. All of these are designs that I'm very happy with, and I hope that you like them too. Please let us know in the comments what you think of them. But if you're a fan of the new 151, I've got an announcement for you. We started this project back on Pokemon Day 2016. It was Pokemon's 20th anniversary, and we wanted to honor it. Our idea was to release new designs every week so that the project would be done in about a year or so. But now here we are more than four years later and not even two thirds done. Clearly we have not been as regular as we would have liked. So we came up with an idea to help keep us on track. We're going to develop our designs on stream. One of us will come up with a concept and do some sketches ahead of time, and then we will come together on a live stream to develop that into the final design. And of course, we will be taking your feedback as well, just like with my other redesigns. We're planning on doing these streams on the second Saturday of every month, so the first one will be on April 11th, and we will be working on Shelter and Cloister. I'll put out another reminder closer to when that's coming up, but I hope that you'll be able to join us. As usual, I would like to encourage you to check out my collaborator Infinipede on Twitter, and if you want to see the newest designs that we've done up to Dugong, you can go to new151.tumblr.com. I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video, and if you're new here, it would be awesome if you could subscribe. Please join me in thanking my patrons for their support, especially luxury patron Ethan Saffron. I know it's a lot of calls to action and you're probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed by now, and I'm sorry. I'm Umbreon Libris. I'll see you in the next chapter. Now someone else will know the secret.